We're live. Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday. You're away from your mic. Oh, hello, everybody. I'm near my mic now. It's Tuesday, and welcome to the Crow's Nest. Uh, today on our show, special guest Rhonda Bender, the real bird with the brush. Hello, Rhonda. Hello, How are everybody. You? Yeah. How are you doing today, Rhonda? I'm pretty well. Um, not too bad. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All these shows seem to start off a little on the awkward side. Um, and I think that's mainly due to me. Um, and uh, we also have Justin, the disembodied voice of Justin. Are you around, Justin? How is everyone doing? Oh, good. Good. All right. We got, we got, we got peoples on. Um, that's so cool. All right. So today, 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 we're going to be talking with Rhonda. We're going to be asking Rhonda lots of fun questions. We're going to be hanging out with Rhonda. And also, a couple, I want to show off a couple of things that I, one thing I worked on last week and one thing that I'm working on now. Um, I have a, you remember this figure, Rhonda? Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's super old. He is uh, Werner Clock, and he's from the Warlord line. I forget his name. He's a crusader. Um, I goofed around with him last week and just started goofing around doing wow. freehand and all that stuff as well. And I want to maybe build a base for him. What kind of base do you think we should do for that at some point? He looks a little cold, so I yeah. wouldn't make it like a summer base. Yeah. I love the colors, though. Holy yeah. crap. Windy cliff top. Yeah, maybe like a cliff and there's snow or ice falling off, and that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. He's very. Thanks, thanks. I did a little. I took his shoulder pad thing, which is sculpted in a little little dealio, and then I did a little freehand on the back. Yes, yeah. I believe that is the symbol of the Templars. Is that the symbol of the Templars? Is and then that's yep. all. That's all kind of freehandy stuff too. Oh, nice. Just because, again, my um, thing from last week and week before, and I don't know if you, I was going to ask you if you agree with this or not, is I tend to do freehand when I don't want to blend as much. Do you know what I mean? Um, if I have a nice, smooth cloak, yeah. I'll break it up with freehand. <laughs> well, blending is my thing. Blending. Even, even if I'm going to freehand. Do, would but you? It is... Go ahead. It's a good way to, if there are problems with the figure, like the sculptor, like there's little divots or something, and uh -huh. you didn't notice when you were fixing it, uh -huh. it's a good way to disguise that kind of thing. <laughs> or if you missed a mold line that you didn't clean yeah. very well. Now, That's that would never happen to you, but it, it constantly <laughs> happens to me. I am, as you know, the world's worst prepper um, for what I do. Um, so, yeah. I, I wish I could send my miniatures to you because you are the world's best prepper. Um, so you could, you could prep all my minis. What do you charge for that? <laughs> um, I could come <laughs> up with something, but yeah, it's not like it's my favorite part, but, yeah. but then you can assemble all my minis. Cause that's, what... ah, yes, I can do that. I can do that because you're not the, the, the little known secret is Rhonda is not trusted with an exacto knife, right? Or glue. Or glue. Or glue. Or glue. <laughs> or glue. That's we've had some issues with that in the past. And then here's what I started working on last night. This is what I'm gonna be working on today. This is Gor Gorgoloth. Can you can you see I him? saw him on your Facebook yeah. page? I think that's a really cool color. Isn't it? So this is from a reference photo that uh Ron and I found online and I, cause I was asking him, what do you want it to look like? And of course, as you know, and I'm not going to throw Rhonda under the bus, sometimes the art direction is not necessarily super clear <laughs> <laughs> until, until the, you've spent too much time doing it. And then it's like, oh, that's not what I wanted. So we traded some photos back and forth. And this was this looks like the most uh, f closest to the photo based on the sculpt. The sculpt was the, the, the drawing online wasn't the same, of course, as the sculpt. So we had to change some things. But yeah, he's looking pretty good. So here's. Pretty far, super far, pretty far along, and not far along, just airbrushed. So there's kind oh, of oh, that's difference. nice for everyone to get to see. Yeah, kind of the stages. You know, the thing that it's I, I uh, I'll get rolling, and I don't know whether you do this or not. Um, it'll it's like the first part you're figuring out what really you want to do. You've got a, a kind of an idea, 
but okay, how is it actually going to work when you put it on the miniature? So I'll be figuring it all out, and that's mostly the work here is just figuring it. And then the, the challenge is then going, okay, whatever I did here, now I have to do it exactly the same over here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's okay on this because I only have to do it again, so twice total. But holy crap, when you paint something with wings, that's four times you have to do it, right? If the if you're if you're duplicating the same kind of the same kind of idea on all sides of the wings, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Although yeah. as a tip for wings, if you look at most animals, it's the wings on the underside than the wings on the back. So then you could just make your life easier. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But they, but you have to do four sides, and now I, now I have to figure out you the inside. <laughs> So you haven't, you, you've, you've just basically said, yeah, you don't have to copy it three more times, but you have to come up with a whole newer idea and just copy it again. Right. I don't always make, I don't think I promise that. <laughs> All right. All right. So what have you been up to lately? I mean, have you been, uh, painting a lot, doing other things, doing your blog stuff? What's been going on? Um, a little bit of painting, a little bit of blog. I mean, since we're in the house all the time, we're trying to, you know, go through our, have less of it. <laughs> but right. in between that, painting and blog, I'm working on the um, succubus that Jean did for Bones 5. Oh, so yeah. Have, uh, have, you post, have you posted up any works in progress pics online or anything? I know I've seen a couple from you, but I don't know whether you posted anything up. Yeah, last week I posted a blog and then some photos in various places uh, for the first one that I've done with the paint and I'm getting ready to post a blog the second one I went for like a much darker skin yeah. so kind of talking about and my experience painting both like you'd think it would it's skin it would be the same every time when you paint it especially they're both sculpts they're attractive women with not much clothing yeah that's not um, hard to but my painting on. experience was that's not hard <laughs> Well, it is because that you can't you can't just free. You got to make it smooth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but my experience in painting them was a little bit different, and I think maybe have this mistake, make an idea that if you learn, I don't know, wet blending or even dry brushing or whatever technique, that every time, regardless of the color or the atmospheric weather conditions or whatever that your experience should be pretty much the same that if you've learned a thing you just learn and that's not really how it works sometimes yeah. you have to adapt to the unique situation that you're in even if it seems like it should be the same as the thing you did it wasn't the same as the thing i did last week so instead of beating myself up and saying i suck at my approach <laughs> which was i'm going to change how i'm approaching this so that it works better yeah, because you think you've got a certain thing down, right? A certain approach, a certain technique, but when, and you're like, okay, and I thought this as I was trying to get better and feel more comfortable and get, I don't know, I guess more comfortable is what I was really thinking about is, okay, once I get this skill down, I can just do it anytime I want to. And that is so not the freaking case. Sometimes it's like, I know how to do this, but that day... I am just sucking, 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 and I can't execute that no that skill that I know I really need to suck. Oh, and by the way, Jean's on. Hi, Jean. Um, oh, hey, Jean. Uh, 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 Rainbow Sculptor's on. Um, what else? Hi, uh, well, there's a lot. Of yeah, on. Mini Painter Jen is I on. I think is, Jason's here. Is that our friend Jen Greenwald? Mini Painter Jen. Um, yeah. yeah. Jen's on. Hi, Jen. Um, Jason's on. Oh, it's all kinds of cool people on. Um, Gray, Gwendolyn Green. Who's Gwendolyn Green? Gwitty and Green. That's Jason. That's Gene. That's Jason. Okay. Because um, he's always got all, he's got millions of monikers. I'm not sure oh. which one he's always doing. Okay, there's oh, there's Bob and Julie on too. Awesome. I got to get Bob and Julie And then also on hello too. to a lot of people whose names I couldn't pronounce. <laughs> And if you ever wonder, I probably know who you are, but I have no idea how to pronounce your name. I was asking if, uh, I was talking to Justin, but when we first started, I threw out a couple of names and I just totally slaughtered them. 
Um, so I, I try to avoid it. Oh, and um, Nightheart Gaming is on. Frank's on, our D&D master. Yeah, Frank. Our dungeon master oh, hi, is Frank. on. Yeah, yeah cool. Which we too. have a game this Friday, don't we, guys? We do. You. Let's see if Rhonda can well, drown this time. Yeah, Rhonda. I got some more dice. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get some new two, dice? Two more sets of dice. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, so will will be off duty next time. Are these official? We'll are these official pizza dungeon dice? They are official pizza dungeon dice. Okay. I'm not okay. going to say I don't have some other dice in my house because <laughs> maybe can... I have a, way too many in my house. But I got, got official pizza dungeon dice because this is the Reaper. So, even here. Since you call me, I'm the Diet Coke of or the Diet Coke of Geek. Here's my jar of dice. That's kind of impressive, right? Ooh. Ooh, look at that. That is kind of And I even have, and you maybe not be able to see them, I have some poker chips. Remember when Reaper did oh, the no, po I... poker thing that one time? Yeah. I have some poker oh, chips. Oh, thank you, Zero. They gave it They uh, gave a tier one sub to Gene. Oh, cool. Gene needed one. I agree. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Who did that? Then that, so I'm actually going to put the Succubi aside just for a minute to paint my character for the game. I uh, won't be able to get it out by Friday. Oh, uh, Rainbow Where Sculptor is Next. priming up the bust that she sculpted for me. Hold on. Ooh. And you, you have a copy, Rhonda. Um, here is, this is what Rainbow Sculptor did for me. And I painted it up. And this is actually her copy whenever... I see her again. I'm afraid to mail it because it's resin and I don't want these things to oh. break off, oh. you know? So I may just pack it really good and mail it off, but yeah, it's crazy eyes and all that stuff too. If you wrap those parts separately and <sighs> then wrap them, that will probably work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always afraid about that. I don't, I, I've tried that and then ship stuff off and it's always gotten broken or it gets broken. Do you a lot. do the box? I do the what? box in a box oh yeah 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 now, it's never really ever been crushed it's just something happens to it in the end when it's together um oh. and and then i have the rule if i ever i send anything to reaper that i send it before i actually go so i can unpack it myself um because at one time i didn't do that and something happened to it so anyways all right so i'm gonna paint a little bit but there was a few things i wanted to ask you since you have a talent, you have many talents that I don't have, um, but one in particular that I don't have is, or, or suck at, in, or have no interest in, or don't even want to be involved with, is this thing called writing, when using your words. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, I, man, well, I'm, you have a lot of talents I don't <laughs> But you are, uh, you always have the best handouts or classes, and, um, but you've been doing this blog thing a lot, and do you, why did why did you start doing that? I mean, I really just have to come with the simplest question: <laughs> Why, <laughs> why, 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 why? Because <laughs> it just well, writing, blows my mind. Actually, my interest in writing precedes my interest in um, physical art. I don't know how we're going to distinguish that. Yeah. Uh, but my degree is actually in, uh, and my original intention was to become like a magazine editor or something. Oh yeah, because I'm old, and, and there were magazines back then. Just to explain to the audience, <laughs> there are these paper things, and you open the pages and read oh. words on them. Just so we're all clear on what magazines are. Um, luckily, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, now yeah, I yeah. Have a job. So I, I always had kind of an interest in writing, and my hobby before I got into miniatures involved a lot of writing and involved a lot of explaining things mm -hmm. to people too. So I ended up having a lot of practice at that. Uh, but the blog thing, so let's say we're, we were at ReaperCon last year and somebody asked you to critique their miniature and you might have said, well, if you put lining on it, it would be good. This is what lining does. You might have said it needs more contrast. And, you know, we'll have a five or sometimes a 10 minute conversation with people. But you can't explain things in a lot of detail. It's hard to show them a picture of like okay here's why i'm saying lining is good look at this one compare it 
and the blog format compared to classes or just having conversation lets me get into de detail about a lot of the stuff behind kind of what we do. So what you what you're, you're doing now is a great way to show how to hold a brush and how much water to put in your paint mm -hmm. and how to manipulate it on the miniature. But your thoughts about why you chose those colors, other than Ron told you to, let's pretend this was one <laughs> where you picked the colors. <laughs> <laughs> let's just pretend that. Um, your thought process into that, that's way more of a, a longer conversation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than just... I mean, you can sum it up as red and green are, are contrasting colors and that's why it's going to work. But you could get into it in a lot more depth than that if you had the time or the interest to do it. Mm -hmm. So the blog kind of lets me talk about the stuff people... Do. I don't have time to tell you all that stuff in a class or, or a critique conversation or just answering a question on Facebook or whatever. It lets me kind of get into all that behind stuff that I think in our hobby we really ignore mm -hmm. a lot. Like we get really obsessed about what paint should I use and what brush should I use and do I use wet blending or layering or whatever. And it's all about the tools and the tech and all those kind of artistic decisions of composition or, or even the stuff we were talking about, your attitude. Yeah. Just that learning a skill is just this. And now I know how to walk upstairs. So I can walk <laughs> up all the stairs in the world like that. Yeah, but I bust my ass walking upstairs all the time, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I fell I fell up the stairs the other night trying to run up the stairs to do something and I fell up the stairs which is a at our old house before we moved I went running around the corner with my socks on and it was wood wood stairs and the um, tile floor and I just slid and busted my ass and broke and broke into broke through the drywall on the wall I, <gasps> my fat butt my fat butt blessed, busted through the wall um, so I had to fix all that but yes and Michelle made fun of me for yes you you fell upstairs. You fell going up the stairs, not down the stairs. So, yeah. No, it's well, one of my favorite. My husband's stories from when he's a kid, like he hurt himself a lot. But yeah. my favorite story is he hurt himself. He sli he did something like that. He was in his stocking. He uh -huh. slide around the floor and he slammed into the fridge. And then his mom <laughs> asked him how he did it. So instead of just saying it, he did. <laughs> he what? He slammed into the fridge again. <laughs> he was demonstrating to her, to her why he had a bleeding head. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. So um, there was a topic that came up. Um, it seems to come up a lot, and it's kind of a serious topic here, but it's been a couple of questions um, that have popped up through the various uh, uh, my other shows so far that I didn't get on, didn't catch on to. And I think somebody asked it last week, and I purposefully waited because I knew you were going to be on because you and I have talked about it a lot, and it's that um, imposter syndrome, right? Um, yes. You always think, I mean, I'm going to say me, I, you know, I'll get in my head at times and I'll think, you know, God, am I really any good? I kinda, I'm kind of, I'm kind of faking this, you know, when are people going to really realize, uh, you know, that Proctor guy, he's, he's all right, I guess, but he's, <laughs> you know, and, and I, it's funny it, for the longest time, and this is before you and I ever talked about it, or you and me and Jen Greenwald have talked about it too. Um, I thought, oh, that's just me, you know? And then I think it was Jen or you that found the article on it a, a few years ago and we were reading it. Um, but I mean, what are your, do you, do you fall into that sometimes? Um, the whole imposter thing too, or just getting in your head too much is like, God, you know, making it too big a deal and kind of losing the fun a little bit or do you know where I'm going? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely have had moments like that. And I mm -hmm. think before going to a convention or something like that is when I'm most likely to do it because you're trying to get stuff ready and you know you're going to hang out with all these like people you admire and yeah. see all done and it's like and then I'll be like why am I teaching classes <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about I'm really just making all this crap up yeah. so yeah I'll absolutely have moments like that but but it's it's weird so I for a long time I debated whether to even tell people and I guess I've decided it's better to be honest or not. It's kind of like you were saying, you you think you're going to master a skill and then you just know it. It's like, so you think you're going to get to a point where you are okay with what you do and you don't, like you're, you look at people you admire and you're like, well, like I'm watching you right now. Like how mm -hmm. can you possibly think you suck? You're doing 
doing this cool creative thing. Yeah. And it looks super cool. But I've talked to you, so I know you you have moments where you think you suck. Yeah. Um, but objectively, you know you're decent at it. It's like, yes, I know I'm not terrible at this. It's not completely <laughs> ridiculous that I do this, you know, so-called professionally. But I, I can still have those days where I feel like everything I do is shit. And <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And it's all just... I don't know, formulaic or tedious, or Anne will say she's a hack all the time. That yeah, her, yeah. How she puts it. Like I still have those days, so it's like there's a part of my brain that's like, yes, I kind of know what I'm doing, and then there's another part of my brain that's like, really. <laughs> but when we when we got together and we did start semi professionally, I don't know how you want to put it. Yeah. Um, I kind of just decided, you know what, I'm fake it till I make it. Like I'm. I'm not going to talk about that all the time. Yeah. I know that that if you if you you're still trying to learn skills then it gets really annoying to hear people who are good at things talk about how much they suck at. Cuz that's frustrating too, right? Yeah, that is true. That's very true. Yeah. You're like you're like, you're like by, and you're thinking to yourself, "Shut the f up." You know, you're really good. I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I only wish I could do that. Why are you saying you suck? <laughs> right, right, uh, right. Right. <laughs> so I didn't want to be that. So I'm like, "Well, maybe if I Pretend that I do know one and no one notices. <laughs> so I'll get away with it. And I don't know. <laughs> that is that is a pretend and just ma ma ma. I yeah, and I think I, you and I have talked about this before. It's also I think sometimes the people that struggle with the whole imposters thing too at times I just don't want to ever come across as being a tool either. You know what I mean? It's a feeling like I know this. I'm I'm super great whatever so i never want to be that way because i don't think that way but you know i and it's people that are learning and coming up and they're you know starting off in their chops we've all been there before and i want to be able to help those fucks I, those folks fucks oh, there's the first one there's everyone, the first one yeah everyone go ahead and drop Good your job, f-bombs man. in the chat yeah drop your f-bombs in the chat love the, um, yeah love that, the that wasn't chat. even an intentional f-bomb that was that was just Do we a, have like a little emoji for that yeah i know right um to, to clarify proctor does often refer to all the other artists as fucks <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is not true as far as anyone knows that is not true are those f-bombs all the little green things i see popping oh my up gosh, they are awesome <laughs> awesome God, that's a I fairly know. new uh emoji by the way awesome yeah anyways oh, well, i, I, I did, get some use yeah it's especially on this show i would imagine it's going to get some definite use um so how's the cat doing Rhonda? is the cat calm down uh, there were three, and so yeah. far they do all seem to be calm. Which okay. Perhaps they are plotting something. <laughs> are not they together, in the? Are they? Are they in the room with you? They are, are not. In, luckily, they went away and went to sleep. Okay. Okay. My husband's also in a meeting, and he has his door closed. And one of the cats was having a lot of feeling. Uh, and so, and that cat, lo- yeah. Uh, when you when you look at your phone, try to keep it out from the view of the camera. Oh, okay. Was it in the camera? I was. It was. No, I, had, I just I didn't want you to like show off anything personal. Oh no no no! I Ron and I had a couple chats show and they were like, you. "So what? What do you want to see? All my work stuff? See, there's my phone." <laughs> that was a that was a chat I had with Rhonda last night, and we were I was like talking about some potential questions and whatnot. Um. So did you, so you made it, you went to the last con of the year. Um, I was calling it hashtag last con. Yeah. Last so I con. actually flew on March 11th, uh-huh. the day that pandemic was declared. Yeah. I had a commitment and I wrestled with it all day actually, because I had a later flight even. It wasn't like I left at eight in the morning mm-hmm. and I'm like, should I do this? Should I not do this? I'm like, if I paid for this myself, I would not do this. Right. But. I knew where I was going that there weren't going to be a ton of people in our area where the hobby stuff was going to be. Oh. And I was, I was flying from a smaller town to a smaller town. I'm like, I think it'll be, but it was, it was a very weird experience to be out of town doing the thing they were starting to tell everybody not to do at the same time as they were telling everybody not to do it. It was, it was a bit surreal, but yeah. it was. I was in Seattle 
like when it first hit and when it was in Seattle. <laughs> I had oh. to fly I had to fly I... in for work and that's when I was just at the uh the nursing home, right? But I that's a, over by a big hospital that I always go to um for my job and whatnot. And uh yeah, it was it was kind of stressful at the time. It was still the beginning, and it was still like, oh, it'll just be this little isolated thing. It was because these people had some exposure to somebody coming over from China or whatever they were saying at the time. Um, but yeah, it was flash forward to now. It's, it was really weird. Yeah. It, we didn't know what what things were going to happen or whatever. So it, it's um, still surreal to me that this has kind of become a the same sort of household talk that you were talking about 15 years ago or 10 years ago when people were saying, you know, where were you on 9-11? And now it's, yeah. where were you when pandemic was declared, you yeah. know? And as, as things move along, we start to realize that everyone alive right now who cognizantly knows what's going on um, is living history is going to be able to remember that and tell their children's children or the grandchildren or whoever and it's, it's going to be pretty impressive i think right. it's it's rough right now but i think when it all passes it's 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 kind of a monumental thing to be living through i went over and saw my mom um for mother's day yesterday was that yesterday day before yesterday uh two, yeah, days. two days and we had our masks on and everything and then we're, we're working in the yard putting some stuff in but i asked her I asked her what um, her experiences were for the um, Spanish flu, and uh, she flipped me off and said I wasn't yeah, even I, I wasn't even born then. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but I, and I knew that I did know that. I was just you know being a smartass, trying to trying to rile her up a little bit. So, but I, I think know. this Spanish flu is probably the last event that was truly worldwide. Yeah, like, yeah. Even we call them world wars, but there were areas of the world that weren't strongly affected. Uh-huh. And this, this is every, I mean, this really, like Justin was saying, this is an experience we're all having together. Oh, yeah. It's I just, kind of mind blowing. It is. And I think there's just, I mean, it's just time. I, hopefully we can get back to normal and some normalcy and get back to work and get back to people may having their jobs and working and not having to work at home and get back to actually having a job if they got laid off, unfortunately, because of all this, if they worked in the service industries or something like that. Um, that's just, that's awful. It's hard to, I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of a bummer thing. But um, I wanted to get back to you, Rhonda. And, um, okay. you know, one of the things, and I've, <laughs> I, one year at ReaperCon, not ReaperCon, uh, Genghis Khan, um, I taught your level up class. Right. I think you weren't there or something happened. Yeah. The first year I was supposed to be the guest, um, there was snow in North Carolina and that's where my connection yeah. so went through and Southern states do not deal well with <laughs> so, <laughs> the next year. When you invited me back again, yeah. I asked them to please route me through Dallas because you guys have a fewer problems. Although I did get stuck in Dallas on the way back. So yeah, you're good at getting stuck at the airport. It's you and Jason yeah. get stuck at the no, airports that's, everywhere. That's my, that's, and that was the other reason I picked Dallas. Yeah. It's because it's like, well, I do know a few people there. If I have to stay <laughs> over in Dallas, that's not the worst thing. And that's how I got to see, I think I'm the only who's seen three or three out of the four Kickstarter fulfillments. Yeah, yeah, you were there. You were working the lines. Went, yeah, refilling the big creek is mm-hmm. my job on the line. Oh wow! So when you didn't show up to Genghis Khan for whatever reason, you want to state now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I tried to get a ticket. We had all, we had these we had these famous classes of yours. Um, that people already bought tickets for and everybody and we're going to show up and everything. And I was just like, ah, level up. Hmm, I've never seen that. I'll teach it. <laughs> and I went through your, <laughs> you didn't want to read the handout. Well, you know, that would require some planning and some forethought and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm just not necessarily, it's not necessarily my strong suit. Um, but, uh, I remember teaching that class going and I said it in the class. I'm like, wow, I learned something. <laughs> 
<laughs> that makes sense. Let's go over this handout together and let's figure out what I know. Then I'll talk about it. And then we'll just figure out the other stuff that I have no idea what she's talking about. So yeah, level up class is really good. And you've, what, I mean, I could guess kind of, kind of guess a little bit what prompted you to do that, but um, what was your kind of motivation? And do you still teach a level up class or are you kind of moved on? Um, no, I still teach that one. I've act in my dreams. I would like to go back and overhaul it completely. So mm -hmm. it's actually sort of ended up what we talk about mm -hmm. in class is somewhat different than the handout. So you essentially get two classes because I've just, it just grows and grows. And that's kind of what the blog is. Mm -hmm. The level of class is not a manageable mm -hmm. two hours thing anymore. So I can just spew thoughts at my leisure <laughs> on the blog or you know, maybe someday I'll even get a Patreon, you know, um, yes, but, let's talk about your, your Patreon. Now, let's, let's keep going, but we'll come back to your Patreon thing because I want to keep pushing you on that. One of the, the big impulses to do that class was uh, I was friends with this a little bit through the community, and, mm -hmm. and then we were friends on Facebook, and he just had a meltdown one day mm -hmm. because he's like, I am putting white in my highlights, and I am putting black in my shadows, and if one more person told to make more contrast, it's like I am literally throwing everything in the garbage and never doing this again. Like he was, so I texted him privately, and I'm like, okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> this wasn't like, me, I, was it? <laughs> no, this was not you. <laughs> this That's the funniest thing about the level up class is because mm -hmm. a lot of it is based on stories and interactions and classes and stuff like that and i'll say that and i'll mm -hmm. be vague and not say who it is and people will come to me after the class and they'll go that bit was about me right and I'm like, <laughs> nope, never has anyone that act initiated the story been the person to come to me and say was that about me mm -hmm. um but that's how universal these experience that that oh okay now i have a cat bug me but yeah, I can't help you. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to text my husband and see if he can feed the cat. Yeah. Oh, it's it's cat so feeding time I, there. I, I, oh, yeah, it totally is cat feeding time. So I talked to him for a while about, okay, so contrast is more complicated than that. And yeah, mm -hmm. we do always say darker or d brighter highlights, darker shadows, yeah. but it's more complicated than that. It's about where are you putting them? What proportion are they in? They're, they're, there's all kinds of things. So after I like wrote him this like essay about it, I'm like, I know he's not the only person that's having this problem. Right. And there have been other things that came about. Like I, the first time I taught my blending class at ReaperCon, and for people who haven't attended ReaperCon only since the Kickstarter years, classes used to be like a max of, so it was a very intimate environment, and mm -hmm. it was a great way to get feedback on your class topics. So I taught the class and then it seemed like all the questions afterwards weren't really about how to push the paint around on the miniature or how to mix the paint or whatever. It was stuff like, you know, losing the mid-tone or not having enough contrast. It was all kinds of other problems kind of relate to blending, but mm -hmm. weren't really the nuts and bolts technique stuff. So a bunch of that is also what kind of went into the first iteration of yeah. the level up. And it was sort of just me as an intermediate painter going, if I could go back in time and tell myself the things that would save me a lot of frustration, yeah, what I would tell myself? And then I started collecting stories from other painters, and, and what is now it keeps growing. So the you know whenever I asked, um, and I've said it a few times in the show, and is you know the one if I could only give one tip, one tip to somebody, I always say lining, 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 line, 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 and more lining. Get your blue liner. And <laughs> buy a buy a bunch of bottles of this blue liner and just line the crap out of everything. You know, you'll see lining all on this guy. You see lining underneath here. You see lining here. Da 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 da. Um, and they everybody hears that on all my little dumb shows I've done. What is your besides lining? <laughs> since that's besides already lining. taken. Okay, because I was <laughs> say, you have have identified a very yeah. That's blue mine. Liner is the best it, one. It's yeah. mine. Don't take mine. Don't take my one idea. <laughs> What is, what is, if you had one thing to say to help somebody level up, like if you're given a critique at ReaperCon or someone comes up to you or whatever and says, yeah, what's, what's the one thing that you, if you, yeah, you had to go to class and you just want to give them one little tip or whatever, however you want to um, position it, what would you, what was your one thing you'd go to? So everyone gets obsessed about the contrast between shadows and highlights. Yeah. But I think there's like an even more fundamental contrast 
that starts before that. Uh-huh. And, and I, I think we can kind of see it on your girl off, but it, it, I don't, do you have the Crusader guy? Maybe we can see it yeah, 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 Or yeah. just human guy. Uh, where did he go? There he is. Okay. So if you look at him, yeah. his skin's fairly light in color, uh-huh. and then his the purple blue stripes of his shirt are darker uh-huh. and then his cloak is, is like a lot darker. So you've got different areas of the miniature are d- different values of color uh-huh. and particularly adjacent areas. So his hair is darker than his face. So when I'm looking at him on the screen, even though he's fair, I can see right away this part is his face and this part is. Uh-huh. Um, so to build, build in that sort of legibility, because when we talk about midtones, there tends to be this habit where, and I did this like so much when I first started painting mm-hmm. and even up through being an immediate painter. So I would start, if I was going to paint the blue shirt, I would start with a medium value blue and then put the dark shadows and then put the highlights and then the skin tone would be medium value skin. And so, so if, if you take a picture of it, in black and white, the mm-hmm. colors of gray are very similar. Mm-hmm. So what I would say is aim for a look where if you take a picture in black, one section next to another section, there's going to be a big jump in value between those so that you can clearly see which parts on the figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And lighting yeah. helps if you don't do that, or if you have like, you know, somebody they're like paint my character for my game yeah. and she's really pale skin and she has white blonde hair, you're breaking that rule. But if you put the lining between the hair and the face, then that helps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But together, those things will make your miniature stand out on a table or a shelf, a locker. How does your, I mean, I think it comes down to is as you're painting your miniature, you know, put, I like to put it at arm's length away and look at it and then maybe even mix it in with some of the other things I might have already painted. And then how is it um, standing out from the rest, you know, how is that piece? And I think this goes into even when, if you're going to start in, entering competitions and whatnot, um, what are you doing to make that thing pop, to make it, yeah. give it, give it a little more interest and yeah, having different tonal ranges and adding, you know, contrast isn't just light and dark, right? It's colors, it's intensities, it's, um, sheen, right? Shiny versus non-shiny. Everybody yeah. I do a lot of shaded metallics and although I've been doing a lot of uh, non-metal metal lately, but I shaded metallics to me was always good because that's a different almost medium in a, in a way because it has that super shininess and it added a little more pop, a little more contrast and stuff. So, oh, Derek's on too. I don't know if I said that. Oh, um, hi, Derek. Yeah. Mocha's also on here. Yeah, Mocha's on. But Derek oh. Derek likes the brown liner. Um, I can't argue with Derek. I mean, Derek <laughs> is, I mean, if Derek says brown liner is the best liner ever, I might have to change. Um, because that's Derek. Um, but anyways, um, I do like uh, brown liner too. Blue liner. But the blue liner's the best. Don't tell Derek. Um, so, <laughs> um, all right. So since you're, since you're on and you're one of the um, head judges, captains of the judging team at ReaperCon, um, you know, we, we've talked about this before. What... Wow. Besides, you know, always given the advice of higher highlights, deeper shadows, right? Um, and the whole color thing. And so what else do you like to direct people towards or tell them or when you're giving them feedback? Um, how do you go about giving somebody feedback after the con? Let's say, you know, um, the person that's coming asking you for feedback uh, entered and they got a silver and they're happy, but they want to push it to a gold, right? Um, how are you? How are you approaching that, and and uh, how, how are you giving them their feedback? Does that make sense? Um, Is that too general of a question? So. Yeah, right. It's kind of general of a question. <laughs> so just it's a little general. Just vamp. Just go. Just go with it. Just, just vamp. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, first, I'm going to start by looking at yeah, and and trying to assess it. Uh, um, for someone going between a silver and a gold and a bronze and a silver, it tends to be slightly different problems. I mean, it's contrast yeah. for all of them. Like, you think there's a point where you're going to have enough contrast, and I'm not sure that that point really exists. And, and as you were saying, are we really nine or 11 or possibly more different types of contrast? Because yeah. contrast is just making things different from one another. Yeah. Michael was talking about 
if you have metallics, then that's a different texture in mm -hmm. essence between the paint, like not even painting textures on miniature, like mm -hmm. acrylic paint, paint and metallic paint. That's a, so when we say there, are, there needs to be more contrast, it's not always, you know, white in the highlights, black in the shadows. There's all these different kinds too. Um, so certainly that's probably going to come up, but I think that refining color, you become a thing that is for intermediate painters, unless there are some people who just kind of have a natural, and I think you're one of these people actually, you kind of have a natural bent towards understanding color and being uh, very comfortable with playing with color. Mm -hmm. And then for others of us, that's a much scarier <laughs> thing to get out of your comfort zone on and mm -hmm. to go a little crazier with but i think that's where a big where you can start your work into a more interesting place and and start working towards going from a solar to a gold so that's i usually talk to people about i tend to call it color complexity so oh i like having, that term i like that a lot like if if you look at the fin of your guy that you're working on i can see that there's purple in the shadows but it's not, not purple like the little circles on his tail it's not smacking me in the head that, mm -hmm. hey look at me i'm purple mm -hmm. but because you use purple and and orange and then some yellow in the highlights that ends up being more interesting to look at than if you just used a dark brown and then a light to bring out the textures on that fin mm -hmm. so stuff like that is the kind of thing that i think if people start playing around with they can get a lot of value out of if mm -hmm. they're you know, by an intermediate level, your basic skills are there. Like you, maybe you can't do a hundred percent perfect blends all the time, or you can't do super tiny freehand or whatever, but you've got a handle on basic brush skill, stuff like blending and that. And, and then you work on improving that stuff the whole rest of your life. Oh yeah. Basically. Or you go with my approach and distract them with a ton of color. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think most of this confuse them with color. <laughs> you improve, like you, you work on improving it the rest of your life. Mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. good, but there's always a way to get better at mm -hmm. something. Uh, but working on just the areas that are your strength, I think that might be the other place where the level up class came from. Um, I, I painted a miniature for Dark Star Miniatures years ago. This is when they first started doing the uh, um, Fire and Ice figures based on the George R. R. Martin books. Yeah, yeah. I painted this uh, lady in waiting. And Jim asked me to do it because uh, he'd, he'd asked Jen Haley to paint it, but she's, of course, super busy and highly in demand, and she wasn't sure she was going to be able to finish it. So he was like, could you paint this for me really quick? So what you're yeah. saying, you were a little but bitter it, that you were second choice. That's what you're telling me right now. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we ended up both finishing them, and he put them up on the website at the same okay. time because okay. he actually enjoys having multiple copies of stuff in yeah. different conditions. He's yeah. actually really cool about it. He's but super I'm cool. looking at yeah. them both, and I'm like, Okay, the thing that's separating my miniature, which is clearly inferior to Jen Haley's miniature, it's not the blending. I'm within 15% of where she is with the blending. Uh, you are. That's you totally are. I totally agree with that, a thousand percent. I would, yeah, I've said that before, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And I have put so much effort on, on that. Like, that's where I was concentrating all my efforts in. And I'm like, well, okay, I've learned, learned that. That's not, that's not why I'm not as good as Jen Haley. i got to start looking at something else Yeah. Now. I got to figure out what something else is. And it turned out that something else was, that's like an iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there's the stuff I thought it was in the, at the top of the water. And then there's yeah. all the stuff that actually underneath the sea. What did you think was the, um, uh, wait, I, I, it looks like the stream is frozen. Oh, that's just me. Never mind. Anyways, um, that was my Twitch thing. What did you think? What did you end up determining? Because I think someone might have even ask this. What did you think was the? Um, what was that iceberg for you? Do you know what was that? Um, well, the tip of the iceberg that I kind of realized at the time was mm -hmm. color. It was, okay. was that I had I had used pink in a teal color scheme, and I had painted the teal with a darker teal, and then mm -hmm. a lighter teal highlighted, and a similar thing with the pink. And then I went in and looked at hers and there was a much more subtle and complex use of color. But then it's, cause I always talk about this in the level of class and, mm -hmm. and I compare the two pictures. I show people the, the pictures. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, every time I look at this, I find another thing. Right. That, cause she had much more of a focus with, which I, you know, I didn't even know what focus was until a few years ago. So that's not where I started out thinking what it was, right. but the way she had done the highlighting and the color use, 
emphasized kind of the the face and the upper torso of the miniature so that's where your eyes were drawn and that's where the focus is draws your eye to kind of this is the main story of the miniature this is the most important part on the figure um, you know the so one we- one of the things that I always get the biggest kick out of and learn a ton from is when we get together and we have our talks and we're hanging out and it's me and you and just talking to painters here and Jen Greenwald's there and Derek is always there and I like grabbing your pieces and Jen's pieces and and Derek's especially just from the standpoint of the three of you paint totally different than I do just i mean the looks are totally different the approaches are totally different but it's neat to see and i'll i'll derek will sit next to me and i'll grab one of his pieces and i'll just spend you know 20 30 minutes just looking at it and looking at the way he approached things and and as i've been around a little bit more and as my maybe my skills have gotten a little bit better i can see what he's doing um but you know seeing the way you do your process and if you look at no one's ever, no one's ever going to confuse my piece for one of yours, you know, <laughs> at all, <laughs> ever. <laughs> That's just because, you know, I'm, I'm a little, let's use the word loose, <laughs> looser with the paint and not as quite as precise as you are. Um, but yeah, but it's, it's, and that's what I've, I've said uh, a lot is God watch take classes from folks, especially when all this crap is over and you can go back and seeing people in in live. And it's one thing to see it on videos and see it, um, you know, on Patreons or whatnot, but to see it live to me makes a lot more difference and just watch how they actually paint. I think I creeped Haley out once we were, she was at one of our artist cons and she was sitting next to me and I was talking to her and they just got kind of silent. And I was just sitting there watching her paint. And she just kind of slowly turned her head towards me and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, creeping you out, I guess. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was, it was kind of like, oh, okay, that's how you do that. Now I may never, um, I won't. I don't use the same approach that she does, but I've taken, I've stolen a lot of Derek's ideas, you know, and made them my own, stolen a lot of your stuff and made them my own. And maybe, maybe you guys have gotten desperate and stolen one of my ideas. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's just good. To, it's good to do that. Um, it's good, to, good to have people around you and go to paint clubs and go and hang out and stuff. And that's when we started doing the show and Justin and I were talking about things. I wanted to make it like, when we have our little artist cons together and have you on and have uh, Jason and, and Bobby on and, and our special guest next week is going to be Gene Van Horn for next week. And then Ooh, eventually, that isn't that going to be cool? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Hey, you know what? It just kind of came out. I want to have Derek on. Um, I want to have Bob. Then I was saying last week, I want to have Bob and Julie on too. And there's a lot of other people I want to have on too. Um, so um, I know there's a lot of people. But anyways, um, let me, so do I, I have a lot of paints on my palette and normally I try to talk about that. I know it's kind of a tradition to show all the paints because people are at various levels, um, for the oranges on his fins and whatnot. Actually, before you do that, can you yeah. show us the other, the unfinished side? Ah, here's the unfinished you've done side. you some more work on this. So give us the- There's the unfinished side. And you'll notice, see this? That is a broken tentacle. <laughs> so, I was wondering about that. That's fun with resin. That's fun. No, this is a freaking print, which is even worse. Oh, um, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, digital prints. Da, 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 da. Digital prints are a pain um, because they're really hard to clean. And you can see some striation lines, which I'm just going to go with and, and incorporate them into the paint job. So, yeah, this is just uh, this side is really just airbrushed at this point. And I did a little lining and you'll see how see how crude that line is and how thick it is. Um, that's intentional just to start blocking off the area. Um, and then I'll just start it coming in. So for me, at least airbrushing is really, um, base coating, uh, adding, you know, not just base coating, but throwing some additional colors on, but I will end up basically repainting the entire miniature again. Um, and when I'm paint, when I'm, when I'm airbrushing, I'll get a lot of, um, this looks very powdery. Um, it's not super smoothie. Um, and you'll see, I even got some up into this fin up here as well. Um, that's, I'll just come back and repaint it. That's what happened over here too. But it kind of gives me the blocked in colors and it gives me more of the visual idea 
um, and it it saves a little time. And it just and especially for biggies like this, you you want to get to the actual fun part of the painting and not just be working on um, the base coats for hours and hours and hours. And it it helps to and I'll come back in when everything is said and done, and I'll come back in and and do some airbrush blending um, with some of these little transitions here as well. Um, and then some, and then I've been doing a lot of inks and whatnot. So that's kind of, yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out, Rhonda. Um, that's why I've been kind of working on it, but now I've got to do whatever I do. Over yeah, it's here really and, interesting to see the her. comparison. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So that's yeah, Reaper Bones 5, uh, Gorgoloth, Gorgoloth, Goo 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 Um, there's a other name for him. Um, but I don't know what it is. Um, so there was one before. And oh, this... Aaron? Do what? Aaron's on, Corporea. Oh, yeah, there's Corporea. Uh, yeah. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing? So that's that. Um, and, oh, and so for the colors, let's see. So for the oranges, um, these two, and I know one of your favorite colors now is that yellow mold from the new Bones thing. Yep, handy um, stuff. This is really cool. This is this is worth that. This is worth getting um, by itself, but also getting that whole entire new bone set. There's a lot of cool colors in there, but this one rocks. This one's super awesome. So, and then this is Auburn Shadow, and then uh, Bones Paint Line Goblin Skin. Auburn Shadow's got a nice triad that goes along with it as well. I actually like this um, mixed in with Auburn Shadow. It's a good break to it, and I think another good color that goes really well with Auburn shadow is harvest Brown, which is 9,200. I think, um, that goes really well too. You can actually kind of put that in the middle of these two. And if you wanted to have a quicker, quicker blending transition with slightly different tones and colors to me, that's kind of a, kind of almost like a little cheat in blending sometimes is not to have the exact gradation down, but to have a little bit of color variation to me, then when I go back and tinting, it it hides my mistakes a little bit better because it's all about cheating. Um, and then for oh, for his skin, oldie but a goodie. Now this bright turquoise is discontinued, right, Rhonda? Is it coming I'm back? I'm pretty sure that one did not make it back. All right, so this one got discontinued, and I started using it prior to realizing, hey, it's discontinued. Um, so I figured out how to make it. So you take marine teal and this linny green or um there's another there's another green maga green they're for bones and add a tiny bit of blue liner and you got this so super easy to make oh. that's that's what it is and i maybe i took i took a tiny bit of blue liner and kind of threw it in there and it came really close and if it it gets you really close if it's a little bit on the dark side then throw a little bit of the teal in um and then my other, one of my other favorite colors recently is this co copper verdigris, 9304, oh, yeah. which is the highlight color to the copper triad. This thing is so magical, so much fun. Um, and then if you have that or don't have that, um, uh, Phantom Glow is a nice kind of substitute as well. They're pretty close. You add a little white to this and you're good to go. Um, and then... Oh, the purples. So a lot of the purples, the higher purples is the retro elderberry. Um, Bruise purple is out now, isn't it? Uh, people can't get either of those two colors. So retro elderberry was yeah. a Reprocon color. Oh, Bruise purple is coming back. So okay. if you're in okay. Bones 5, uh -huh. okay. uh, it's one of the paint selections in Bones Pledge. <laughs> well. Because, yeah, I just used a bunch of that, too. My, the the thing I posted last week, it was like, well, here's my skin recipe. It's all out of print. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I tend to do that too. I tend to, yeah, I tend to forget. Okay. So, oh, and the other color, which of course you can't have yet, is the Proctor Purple color. That's Carnival Purple if you went to the ReaperCon Carnival one. And I have it on good word that this will be coming out in a paint sleeve in the near future. So, you know, those paint sleeves that you and I know about that nobody knows about? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if that was still a thing or not. Uh, 
Um, that's a good question. Actually, I'm not sure that's a, a thing. secret. I feel like Ron well, talked about that on he the did. stream one. He did talk about it in one of the Reaper lives, why I feel comfortable about it, but I probably would That wouldn't. was like like six months ago or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. There was this whole thing with the Black Sting Wyvern thing that was going to come out at some point, too, but, you know, it's bl blame it on the COVID. Um, <laughs> and then the other two colors, and now are these out? Were these... The, the Anything new... with the 9-6, people yeah. can't just buy. Oh, uh, well... Here's really cool colors that you don't have access to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you use? What I used to use, and I purposefully use this, Rhonda, because I was like, oh, this clear, is a beautiful. Clear blue. Yeah. Clear, clear blue. Is it's not, I think one's the cooler and one's the warmer. I would add primary. Ritterlich blue is really good, too as as a goody 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 it's a goody it's a goody glazing color um it's awesome and then this oh, chat says bright turquoise did make it back ah cool and um this clear full full phalo phalo it's the label's messed up the label's messed up also there's like 14 h's in the word yeah phalo Phalo green is really good too. And there's there's like Christmas green or something else. <laughs> okay, I have to share Bugless Peacock green. Comment yeah. Because he said, This show is such a tease. The spirit of Ron infests. <laughs> <laughs> I don't memorize what colors are actually out or not. The nine six is the giveaway. <laughs> a nanny nanny. Zero nine six. They can't have it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. You can't have this. If if someone wrote <laughs> it on it by hand, they can't have it. <laughs> there well, are simple clues. I knew this one. I knew this one. I have a bit. If I... we like it, they can't have, have it. I don't understand. Oh, wait. Is this it? I... You guess like, what I have. I try not to paint with the other production colors. Yes. Yeah. Parker gets a cool purple and Bender is boring brown. <laughs> You asked for it. I did. Because I'm that boring. But, yeah. <laughs> but that one is actually Bobby's favorite color, I think. Next to that is Bobby's favorite. Next to Meadow Green. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. My purple is coming out in the Kickstarter. I do remember that now. I don't know what it's called, it really, at this point. I don't know if they're going to change it. Is it still called Carnival Purple? Probably. Or, or, yeah, because I, I don't think Anne wanted to um, give me credit for creating the purple. Um, she actually created the color. I just asked her for it um, and well, begged her for it. She many, won't many put ago. colors out with different names that are the same. Huh? Because that would be... Like, if, if it's the exact same color, she wouldn't put a different name on it because that would... No, but if it's me, sure. needs to be. Right? No? I don't know. <laughs> she, she's just got policies for how... She yeah, no, it's it's always good to have policies. It's totally good to have policies. So, uh, what else do you want to talk but about? I did. I wanted to follow up on something you said about okay. um, how it's really great to observe people live. Mm -hmm. But given we can't do that right now, there mm -hmm. are so many different streams and videos and people on YouTube like taking advantage of it. Yeah, at home watching these videos anyway make part of what you look at. Like how how Michael has his wet palette set up, or how he's holding the brush, or whatever. like watch those kinds of things and notice how different from, from painter to painter. Like if if you were watching Mocha earlier, she holds her brush in a very unique. Way. Mm -hmm. So there's like no one right way to do what we do. Have you watched Mocha do her little streams? Um, I didn't. I, it... I watched her. She painted the Christmas mm -hmm. a while back. I was watching her paint the Christmas. So. I was I was raving on her last week. I think she's got a great stream. She's got a good personality. She's got good energy. I was doing a lot of research before we launched this um, farce of a show, and um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, what's good, what's not, what's what's interesting, and what's not, and I, just, I always found her show to be pretty very interesting. So that's my little shout she out. Definitely again. has a good energy. Yeah, I know. I'm waiting on the, a check from last week from her, so maybe she'll just combine, <laughs> combine them together and send them to me. Yeah. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, and Bug Lips is on all the shows. Um, is, have we missed any questions? Um, 
or anything? Mm -hmm. Have you been keeping an eye? Because Justin's been super I, quiet on I've this show. I've been watching some of it. I haven't. There's a lot of talk about different favorite mm -hmm. colors. I have been reading questions. I didn't want to interject too much because you guys are having such great conversation. Mm -hmm. so. But did you feel left out, Justin? Or are we um, excluding no, not you at all. anything? I'm much like the people watching this, uh -huh. I find fascination in it as well. So Okay. I've also been trying to do some technical troubleshooting on this end about some some like lag issues we've been having. So uh, how how is my um uploading thing this week? Your compared? connection today has been great. It's Rhonda's okay. that I'm kinda trying to work on. And her oh. husband it works in IT. Um so go you know, figure that out. Yeah, but he's a programmer. He doesn't do hardware. Yeah, can he just reprogram the whole internet? Yeah, come on. It's, it's <laughs> Kevin. I don't think right? I'm giving him access to the entire. Area. It's Kev. It's Kevin Bender. I mean, the Kevin Bender. The Kevin Bender. I mean, but I will talk. Our friend was talking about something they did to boost their Wi-Fi, so I will talk to him about what that would for us. Yeah, yeah, because you're 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 next for this whole streaming thing. We need to get you up and running and doing this. I, I thought they pretty much filled out the schedule 24-7. Oh, they'd make... They'd well, not 24-7, work hours oh, 7, I guess. Yeah, yeah, well... They, um, I am trying to expand shows, but kind of as I've, uh, I'm trying to find a balance between now is currently we look at about 15 to 20 hours of live time each week, and we could go all the way to 40, really, or more, honestly. It's just the problem there is I start to need actual other bodies to run streams because then I would literally get none of my extraneous work done. So right now I'm trying the to best in this what I'm uh, sort of yeah you could yeah, I kind of just need a warm body. Mm. Yeah. So I'm off the hook until Justin gets Okay. Oh no, you're next. We, yeah. I still have room for you, Ron. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> no. You're next. You're you're next totally. Actually, um, I have been working with, uh, or I've been talking to, not working with, but was talking to Bobby about maybe doing some stuff and Jason. And, uh, and we're all the, the artists that, that you guys have seen, that the audience has seen multiple times, that, you know, they're all considered and we're all trying to get people in to kind of diversify. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have a flood of painters. I'm trying to get more sculpting and hands on stuff done. Yeah. So, like, I would love to get Bobby or Gene in here, hint, hint. Um, or even Weeby. Mm -hmm. Those things, yeah. Yeah. Just so that we can balance it out a little bit. Yeah. No, I think it'd be good too, and and see the sculpting process. I'm, I am interested to see, and because I think the big challenge will be how ZBrush translates through video. And I haven't watched any anybody doing digital sculpting online, so I don't know. I think it would be, I think that would be a hard. And I think it'd be hard to, to show that off, but I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's oh, for the producer to, that's for producer. Exactly. Yeah. To figure out. yeah. Chef, Chef of love actually asked what else I did. He thought I was the media commander. Uh, I'm the media commander and the peon. I'm all of them. Yes. Uh, so it's right now it's and, and I did have Collins helping, but Collins has his own. I, I can't ask him to do more than he's already doing. Cause he's stretched to the max. He has his own primary job. He was helping me originally just as side work. So. Yeah, he's he's the director of marketing, right? I, I, I don't. No one at Reaper really has any firm titles. I'm not even oh. entirely certain Ed really considers himself CEO. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Um, at one he, time, at one, at some point, I'd like to have Ed on too. I know? agree. We should have Ed on since you know, since I I took his time slot. And he'll just take it back well, from talking me. Talking about non painting. I I keep hearing that Michael's going to show us his basing secret. Ah, and yet I don't see any basing. I have not. So uh, that's why I was kind of honestly asking for thoughts on him. So maybe a cliff with a little path going up to the top of the cliff, um, a snow field, icing, maybe a little cairn or something, a little religious artifact. Oh yeah. Or whatnot. Um, the thing which is, is a challenge is um i don't know basing is a lot of trial and error right when you're building it um so i don't know what kind of good content that would be <laughs> of me going but then people because well, i think people get this idea that we just know how to do things and we sit down uh, and they're amazing and a lot of what we do too, is trial right? and error back no and, forth, and it's just accepting 
thing yeah. that that's the yeah no i i if anybody's watched this show more than one episode they know i don't know what the hell i'm doing um so, so even at y'all's level just to clarify so the audience has this uh, mm. information you guys still go through a lot of trial and error yeah um you mean you put your pants on one leg at a time i don't have pants yes. on right now i oh, know you don't proctor don't stand up <laughs> I bet you have flip flops. No, I, right now. I I have socks on. I have my socks on. I have to believe honestly that Proctor walks around outside of his home in nothing but flip flops. Mm. That is the one thing he always has on. I yes, I know. we're told that he wears nice clothes to go to work, but I don't believe it. I think he's wearing the backwards hat and the flip flops <laughs> while he's in very important meetings. Lately, since we have all these Zoom meetings and everything, I showed up to one of our big. Um, uh, management board kind of meeting things and I had my head on backwards and I had it was May the 4th and I had <laughs> the Millennium Falcon backdrop in the back <laughs> and it, what one of the guys one of the head guys goes what are you in a bank vault I'm like no and, and <laughs> no and I wasn't in even a gonna bank go, yeah, yeah I, don't hang out with that person no I, I know yeah. I know I do that so I can do this that's really what it's all about Hey, so, don't worry, uh, Jason. I'll have my my agent get in a touch with your agent and Enzo's agent. That yeah, we'll work on. Yeah, well, Enzo's the real draw in all of this. Is we need oh, to have is. a a guest spot for Enzo. Um, Actually, all jokes aside, there's been a market uptick on uh, viewership that they've seen statistically, uh -huh. where people who have cams dedicated to their pets. That generally speaking, you could be boring as a streamer, but if you've got a pet on your stream, it doesn't matter. They will um, come and watch your pet. <laughs> so we that's a good that's also, good to know. Also, thank you for the rate, Troll Lord Games. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Wow. So we are um, in the market down the road as soon as we can finish this kitchen thing um, to get a new pet, get a new get a new critter for the house. Um, hopefully another golden retriever. Mm. I know I've mentioned that, that be before. Fun. You guys but, can get a puppy? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I hope so. I hope we can find one. But um, it'll just, I think it's just kind of what's destined to be. You know what I mean? If it, if it's a ends up being a rescue, then it ends up being a rescue, ends up being a pup, then we're going to get a pup. Um, but you, I mean, you can still rescue pups. Pop. Yeah. That's the best of both worlds, right? Yeah, it would, it would be good. It's hard here in Colorado to find um, any, any of the Goldens that come up for rescue are usually gone before you see them. And I just have an affinity for golden retrievers. It's nothing against any other breed or anything, but that's just kind of what I like and what I go towards. I, so. I love my chihuahuas. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, <laughs> it's that's yeah. It's I don't know. Chihuahuas are interesting. Um, I get it. I they're get just it. little, you know, warmth potatoes. They're, they're perfect. They're warmth potatoes. <laughs> we should yeah. have Bobby on to, to talk about our the. Um, the the great chihuahua rescue you were there Rhonda. were you there for when we yes, rescued the that chihuahua was a legendary that, that was a yes. legendary night yeah wait what I, is this a story well maybe you need to have kevin on for that kevin he's the one that had the sausages and stuff oh yes um yes there was a there was a rain soaked night driving back from dinner in the reaper van and bobby's driving and and uh we're i'm in the front passenger seat and it rains pouring down in sheets and I see this little um, feeble creature on the side of the road and I scream for I scream at Bobby slow down stop 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 there's a little dog there and Bobby swerves to try to run it over and uh, I make him I make him <laughs> stop <laughs> and I get out and we rescue the little chihuahua um, it's it was a really uh, quirky looking chihuahua I was convinced at any moment one of his eyes was going to pop out you know those chihuahuas where their eyes are all wackadoo I um, mean that's that's exactly how my chihuahuas eyes yeah are. well no yeah. it 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 had medical problems yes clearly not a normal <laughs> shaped dog yes like even oh. amongst chihuahuas yeah okay. it had its jaw was all all oh, off yeah. kilter it was all jacked it looked up like a little goblin like a little <laughs> tiny baby goblin it did it did it was a little chihuahua goblin yeah yeah teeth were growing out of its lips and and a warped jaw and uh yeah it was it was crazy it was super crazy uh, but it ended up being um imanda's neighbor it's chihuahua right uh, we brought it back we drove it all the way back to the reaper shop rescued it um and 
were feeding it and Kevin had uh, little snoshages for it and uh, was bringing it back to health. And Amanda was like, hey, I think that's my neighbor. So I forget how the exact story goes. But now if you hear Jackson tell the story, it'll, it's completely different. Like he was this great hero. But I think <laughs> I think we all, all of us that really know Bobby know that what the real story is. And it's my, my, my version this of the story. This was years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. When, when all of the Reaper people talk about pets, there's one reaper people who doesn't yeah that's and that would be bob yeah that's bobby (laughs) jackson yeah he doesn't get the whole pet thing so i'm throwing him under the bus nope he had to his defense he's got a tiny little um house so and it's just it's just him and julie so um he doesn't have a lot of room for a big dog or or whatever or interest, but yeah, more more room than anything. I would like to point out too that uh, while we were having that conversation, uh, Aaron pointed out that uh, she rescued a couple of foxes. Mm-hmm. So she is indeed a doctor who rescues foxes. Ah, well, hey. I, and just when you think she can't get any cooler, yeah, that's I, what I'm saying. I, like, she just... Just... So I don't. I've told you this like last year. Um, my, my wife Michelle. Uh, read an article about crows and how about crows once you if you can get them liking you and hanging out with you how they'll bring you trinkets and stuff right so she started feeding um this family of crows this this one family last we've been here three years will always nest in this um tree off the side of the house and they had three little baby crows and they were teaching them how to fly and michelle started putting out peanuts and uh, they came and they ate a few peanuts and then they kind of um took off for a while and they were gone for most of the year growing up. Well, one of them came back, one of the babies, because we noticed that its right wing had a little white feather on it. And uh, he comes back and he comes back, I don't know, every two or three days or so. And he asks for peanuts and we, we call him Peanut. And Michelle go outside and she'll call Peanut and he'll come and uh, she'll give him some peanuts, just a few. Not to, you know, he's still out there doing all his other crow stuff. But uh, yeah, we have a little little crow buddy um, hanging out with us. It's kind of fun. You should tell Collins that story. He has an obsession with crows, actually. Oh, does he? Is that why he's kind of obsessed with me yeah. a little bit? Maybe. I mean, yeah. he I is, thought it was kind of weird. In, yeah. <laughs> different reasons. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> but when they first moved into their house, in fact, I think he's still doing it. He buys uh, boiled, unsalted, I think, or boiled peanuts, and he uh-huh. just throws them out in the yard and canvases his yard with them regularly. Oh, wow. He, just flood his backyard with crows. Well, we I will take a handful and I'll mash them up on the on the deck rail, and then they will uh, they'll come and land and they'll they'll open up the rest of the shell. It's pretty cool. Yeah, they're big too. The, well, the when ones. You, go ahead. When you have Derek on your show, ask about this book because he's telling me about this book, Gifts of the Crow. It's oh, great. okay. Interesting. Yeah. So you're a little to the left of your marker. Ah, there we go. Is that good? So, yeah, so on this on this piece, at least on this side, is you get going and you feel like you've gotten pretty far along and then it just becomes a myriad of tiny little details and working out all the little parts and whatnot. And I still need to get this fin a little bit better. I mean, it's got nothing on it right now. And that one's starting to come together. Um, but it's just going to be a process. And maybe I'll show them again next week to see how far I've gotten along with this or I've gotten distracted onto something else at that point. Um, cause this, this guy, I mean, literally this, this guy just came, um, I don't know. I painted him like on Thursday or something, Thursday and Friday, just goofing around. I just, just didn't want to oh. do anything. Um, and he was just kind of fun and a little cartoony, but I kind of like him. So, well, all right, Proctor. So what are you feeling on this guy? How do you decide when you're done on this thing? Yeah. Or anything. <laughs> It's like, like, yeah. like, that. like, like this guy. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, to the, the, the honest answer is when I just can't look at him anymore. You know what I mean? Okay, or, that's fair. <laughs> you know, when it's just like, uh, I need to move on to something else. I really need to, to figure need to get started with something else or something else, you know, shiny has popped up and I'm like, Oh, shiny. I'm going to go paint that now. Um, kind of thing. That's usually how it honestly ends up. Um, you know, for this, this will be a, a Reaper studio piece at some point. Um, so I just need to make it look nice. 
Um, so probably, probably, I have probably about four or five hours or so in this so far. So maybe another four or five hours. I learned something from Derek a long time ago. Um, he keeps a log where he tracks his hours that he dedicates into a piece. And I really like that. I, tr I don't do a good job at it at all, but I try to do it mentally. Okay, how much time am I going to put into this piece? Um, and I usually get a good sense of what's going on, and then I can be like, okay, cool. Um, there's... <laughs> there are some comments. <laughs> yeah, I see a Bobby comment. My psychic powers are telling me there is a falsehood being broadcast about me. Is this so? No, it's totally 100% accurate. I mean, your actions... With that Chihuahua, Bobby, speak for themselves. So you know that's up to you. You you know you know what you know what happened that night with the Chihuahua, and uh, how everybody else came and saved the day, Bobby Jackson. So and Derek is saying he still has the book, The Gifts of the Crow, so he could uh, yes do it again. Yes. Talk about it a little more. Yeah. No. 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 I, I. I want. She stole that from. Oh, the idea from Sandra Garrity, the one on the on the on the tracking the hours and stuff. I think that's important. I think that's important too. When, if heaven forbid, you decide you want to be a, um, a freelance painter or do work commission painter, I guess is the right word. Um, and if you want to make sure you're getting your time for your money, or you, you're never really going to honestly get that, but trying to maximize that is you know track your hours and you know push yourself and. Um, I find, especially when the, the, the chickie that I painted for May, um, I knew I had to get that done quickly and sometimes the time constraints really help, but then I, are you pushing your paint, um, pushing your, uh, uh, your uh, I don't know, your production on it as much as possible, trying to get block in the areas, trying to move forward and trying to get to the fine tune areas as quickly as you can. Um, I don't know if I made any sense there or not. Maybe I'll, we'll spend some time, some time doing talking about that. Um, but are we at um, how how long have we been doing this, Justin? One hour and twenty minutes. All right. Well, it's probably about time to wrap up. Um, Rhonda, did you have fun? I did. did you have, I had we, fun watching you too. Yeah, and we had fun throwing Bobby under the bus too at the end. That was always good. That's always a bonus. Yeah, and that that's is. Always good. And that is something that we would have done in uh, ArtistCon if we were all sitting around oh, at the table. 100%. <laughs> so it's always you good to do that. You got the authentic experience. You, you did. Yeah. You did. You got, you know, you got some sharing time and then you got, you know, inevitably. <laughs> and I, I tend to be the brunt of that being thrown under, run under, under the bus a few times. Um, so it was nice that it was Jackson this time. So No, was... everyone ends up under the bus at one point or another. <laughs> Maybe Jen's escaped it. Yeah. Jen escaped it under the bus. Well, Jen's like this silent assassin. Um, so yeah. I, I think that she intimidates a lot of folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, hope everybody had a good time. I had a good time. It was fun. Um, I think we, I really enjoyed not having technical difficulties this week. I think we avoided that for the most part. Um, is that right, Justin? We didn't, we're not going to have part one and part two. Yeah, no, we all zero issues. At least this week, yes. Yeah. At least this week. Um, there's always next week. Um, always. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and Gene made a reference to the poop van. At some point, maybe next week, Gene could talk <laughs> about the poop van. Gene, next, when you're on next week, we'll, you're going to, you get to talk about Jen and the poop van um, and, and other assorted stories related. Well, uh, Gene's like the artist historian, so he'll have all... He is. The best story. He is. He is. Well, cool. Um, hey, John. Hey, Rhonda. What? What else do you want to pub? Like, what else you got going on? Tell us more. Tell us some partying stuff about you. Where can people find you? Where can people check out your this, this blog? Thing uh, well, I think they've been mentioning about? the blog in the chat. Yeah. Uh, it's just bird with a breath, and then there's a little link at the top that says blog. Uh -huh. uh, the main page kind of plunks you down in that. Uh, table of contents to the main blog topics okay. from the past because the one thing i don't love about blogs is you can't, it's not organized like chapters or table of contents or whatever but i just gave up on trying to make my own website and accepted yeah. the horror that is blogs Do you know <laughs> do you know the thing that i struggle with about blogs you don't like writing oh no reading <laughs> or reading oh you don't like reading <laughs> 
Well, yes. Overall, <laughs> blogs are not really for you, Derek. Blogs, <laughs> blogs are a lot of reading. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, creating a blog, that's just not even an option. But yeah, no, no. No, but you, if you haven't, if you guys are looking for some great, at this point, free info, um, because you really need to start your Patreon thing. Um, I because, do. Oh my gosh, just a wealth of talent and knowledge and the way you were able to convey and share it. Um, we didn't even get to talking about um, the run, learn to paint kits and how you created those and, and how awesome those are. So we're going to have to... Sounds have like to, we need a part two. We do need a part two on that because that's huge as well. But check out Rhonda's blog. Um, it's super awesome. Um, and then what you've got a Facebook page too, right? Um, yeah, that's Bird with the Brush also, yeah. I think. That's now your you're... You're bird with the brush, so you're, um, but you're also wren. Yes, oh, okay. I'm not very, very good at picking names. Is what happened there. <laughs> but but it's more it's more bird with the brush at this point. That's that's your yes okay, yeah go, it's go, more go, bird. Go. When I'm on like forums and and some of those things, I think it's still wren. But okay for okay. anything that's like okay I don't know where I'm officially trying to share information. Uh -huh. I think it's more bird. Yeah, yeah. And well, I, cool. I do accept personal friend requests on Facebook sometimes, but I honestly don't talk about miniatures that much on my personal page. So if you that's just want me to go to the bird with the brush one, if you want to hear like cat stories and stuff, that's what my personal page is for. <laughs> Same thing here. If you want if you want miniature stuff, go to my Clever Crow thing. If you want to see, <laughs> see me mountain biking or complaining about my kitchen, go to my personal page. Other than that, you know, if... I'll I'll accept any anybody any request, but you, just so you know, I'm just FYI. So, anyways, uh, oh, um, one other thing. What about uh, D and D on Friday night? Oh, looking forward to it because mm -hmm. I have all those new dice now. Yep, you got the magic dice. Yeah. Hopefully, one of them's magic. I know. Well, hopefully, none of us die. Frank, don't kill us if you're still on. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I already got all this set up, and I painted a miniature and sent it to you. I don't want to die. Um, but anyways, that's it for today. Uh, well, Justin, did you want to set up a raid? Um, yes, actually, I'm I, so glad you gave me an opportunity this week. <laughs> I know. I I threw you. I cut you off last week. I'm sorry. I I just I almost did it again. So look like oh you do look look like harry potter you i think your outline looks a lot, little like um pet shop boys if you that's probably dating me um so anyways yeah pet yeah. Shop boys. i think it doesn't look like justin does this change <laughs> no, every week no that's change. what it was change that's what week. it was all right so thanks all again right. uh gene next week please join us uh 4 p.m central time later all right, we're going to be raiding Captain Mad Love. Thank you guys for coming okay. out. You're awesome, and we will see you tomorrow for Anne's show in the morning. Bye -bye. Thank you guys.